Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. Best baseball player, 1942. Ted Williams, back to back. He won 1941. 1942, what does he do? He wins eight out of 13 offensive categories. Dominated. 1941, he won six of them. 1942, eight. Where did he win? Batting average, 356. Home runs, 36. Runs batted in, 137. Runs scored, 141. Slugging, 647. On base, 499. Half the time. Walks, 145. And total bases, 338. I'm combining all the National American League players, looking at all the stats from 1942. Look at everybody. Ted Williams, the best baseball player for that year. I just named off the eight. 13 categories I'm covering. Batting average, home runs, runs batted in, runs scored, slugging on base, base on balls, and total bases. He didn't win the hits. Johnny Pesky had the most hits. Ennis Slaughter had the most triples. Don Colloway had the most singles. And George Case had the most stolen bases. Those are the other categories. How about Ted Williams back-to-back? -back? That's the second win. Let's look at his 1942 season. 150 games. 522 at-bats. 141 runs scored. Almost a run a game. 186 hits. 36 homers, 137 RBI, listen to this, 145 walks. They're afraid to pitch to him. He plays 150 games and gets 145 walks. That's almost a walk per game. And of course, other games, he probably had two or three walks. In other games, he didn't have any walks. But he averaged out almost a walk per game. Good, good batting eye. 356 average, 499 on base. That's half the time. 648 slugging and 338 total bases. What a year, Ted Williams. He's 23 years old. And he dominates the whole league. That's how good a hitter he was. What's depressing or... What is significant in baseball history is this. To me, it's depressing. 1943, 1944, and 1945, he's in the military, and he misses three complete seasons of not playing baseball. He would have been 24, 25, and 26. What kind of numbers would he have put up? Let's say he hit 40 homers, Per year. That's 120. And let's say he gets 180 hits per year. What's that? 180 times 3. That's 540 hits. So 120 more, 120 more home runs if he played those three years. And 540 more hits. Did you know that he ended up with 521 home runs? despite missing those three years. So 521 and 120 is what? 640, 650. He could have been in the 650 in home runs. You know, he had 1,839 RBIs. So if he had 100 RBIs in those three missing years, that's 300 more RBIs. He would have been over 2,100 RBIs. So I've got him at 650 homers, 2,100 RBIs, 
And listen to this. If we add 540 more hits, because he's averaging 180 a year, add that to the 2,654 he did get. That was his final total in hits, 2,654. 540, he would have had 3,100 hits. So he would have been a member of the 600 Homer Club, member of the 2,000 RBI Club, and he would have had 3,000 hits, and he would have had a 344 career lifetime batting average. The splendid splinter. Is he the best of all time? I rank him a close second or third as far as best hitter of all time, not the best ba baseball player of all time. Best baseball player of all time, I consider Babe Ruth, and I've got Lou Gehrig number two, because in other videos I've explained my reasoning. I've got Ty Cobb as the best hitter of all time, different from the best baseball player of all time, because Cobb didn't have the homers and the RBIs like Ruth did. Cobb had the higher batting average, and he had over 4,000 hits. Ruth had good batting average, 342 career, didn't have the 3,000 hits. Had 2,800 hits, but he had the 714 homers. I'm going to put Ruth over Cobb, and I also put Garrig over Cobb. I've got Cobb number three. Who do I have number four? Again, I wrote a book called Baseball Matchups. I compared all the stats between Roger Hornsby and Ted Williams, and I did the what-if scenario if they all played the same number of games. As you know, that Roger Hornsby just eked out Ted Williams, because he had a 358 lifetime batting average. He would have had over 3,000 hits. Didn't have the homers, had about 300 homers. But as far as best hitter of all time, I've got to rank Cobb one. I've got to put Hornsby two. I've got Ted Williams three or four right in there. There's another player, Ned Delante, had a career. He batted 346 career. That was a little better than Ted Williams. And if you have him matched up with Williams, didn't hit, didn't hit the homers. But Delante was a better hitter as far as overall. He had like 2,600 hits in only 1,800 games. Give him 3,000 games. He's over 4,000 hits. Williams doesn't approach the 4,000 hits. He's, he's over the 3,000 hits. So as far as best baseball player, best, Ruth, Gary, those two. And I've explained it in other videos. As far as best hitter, Cobb, Hornsby, maybe Delante and Williams are tied right in there. I did the matchup. I think Delante beat out Williams in a matchup. But for this video... 1942, we're going to give it to Ted, ba Ted, Teddy Ballgame, Williams. 344 career batting average, 2,600 hits, 521 home runs, 1,800 RBIs. What a player. That's his second win. Now, he goes in the military for the next three years. So who's going to win 1943? Greenberg's in the military. So is DiMaggio. So who becomes the best baseball player 1943? Stay tuned. I'm out.